Hey guys, how's it going? It's me, Josh Halter, owner and founder of The Bio Dude down here in Houston, Texas. It is in the beginning of November and I am doing a complete walkthrough today on my upgraded 3,000 square foot warehouse as well as the additional showroom that I am working on building. So let's go on in here, shall we? Welcome to my office. So I'm sure you guys saw this from the first video. A couple of things have changed, you know. I got some of my tanks changed up. I have my trio of my rare earth red Aki's monitors down here. And currently two of them are out. And these guys are just, these guys are just awesome. To say the very least. They have, uh, they have a network of tunnels everywhere. Yep, that's about it. Yep, see, and then they're just gone. They peek their head in and out of the leaves. These guys have been destroying hard, hard boiled egg, a uh, bunch of different types of uh, different worms, and they're just voracious little hunters. They're great. There he is. Plants are all thriving. Got my Borneos in here with a couple different tadpoles with the filter running strong. I've done one filter pad change and I haven't had any issues, but as you can see, everything is thriving. Um, Oh, here's a rare sight. Check this out. See my pair of cinnamon tree frogs? They are in a plexus, which means there's going to be even more tadpoles in here. I got some java moss growing in here. There's a little bit of uh, moss fusion. There's a little another cinnamon. It's a male. I got some baby tears, you know, a bunch of different stuff. Corn's just had a fresh shed. You can see fierce right here. You know, and you can all obviously, and you can even see it's starting to be broken down. This shed will be gone 12 hours right here at the bottom. You see how it's starting to break right here? There's a bunch of bugs all throughout this cork tube that are slowly starting to munch on this. And then I got my oscillateds down here. You know, I'm really digging these guys as usual. This is the baby tank and to be honest with you, they're really not babies anymore. <sighs> Got them. Yes, inquisitive little, little beings. Okay. All right. So, and then I got one of my polydariums right here. Of course, this row hasn't changed much except for some new additions of my green tree skinks. You can see some of the crew up there in unison. Um, they're all, they're all thriving well. They will be getting an upgraded tank here soon. You know, my lemurs are right there. I got my my super tiger legs, which I don't foresee them being out right now. But I will love to give you guys an update on my Cubans. So I took in a stray green tree frog that has found its way living in my warehouse. That is living with the Cubans. He is Cuban B and an anoleum and anoleum steel and you guys see yeah buddy that's what i'm talking about i can't wait until they get like the enormous size because he's already getting getting pretty nasty and then here is uh pretty sure this is uh my female but they're thriving in this enclosure and the green tree frog is going to thrive in there until they get really big and then when they get big he'll have to be removed most likely or else he'll get eaten here's my uh, red eye enclosure which is something pretty cool I'll show you guys. So these red eyes, I did the math. These guys, red eyes to my knowledge are over 12 years old. I got them a little bit before Danielle and I met and uh, they have been living in this tank ever since. And this tank is thriving. So there's all stages of uh, tap holes in here, but cool thing, Don't want to disturb them too much. They're also in Implexus, and you can see how the girl's abdomen is all swollen up. At nighttime, there'll probably be a bunch of eggs in here. And then you can see another one of the girls. Sorry, guys. I didn't mean to wake you up. And then you can see another one of my girls right there. Very cool. Thought you guys would appreciate that. This is probably one of my favorite terrariums that I have. I love these guys. 
love them to death. So, let's go out to the warehouse. Oh, before I forget, I also got these. Um, Mattel Hicks, they're all originals. This guy is an amazing draw. They're all hand drawn. I got, I got two more over here. This one's probably my favorite. It's a the lace monitor. I don't know if you've ever seen those in person, but I will one day have the. Have, I will work with them. Okay, so let's go out. Go on out here to the warehouse. So for Tuesday, it's been relatively busy. Both, uh, both my full timers uh, just went home. We got some orders out today. Uh, the other half of USPS is already out. So here is my uh, normal shipping station with bubble wrap. I got FedEx Express boxes in here, which is going to be picked up. And of course, all of my heavy duty boxes. With a lot of working around and getting trial and error, I started to figure out the best boxes to use to get my substrate and all of its contents to you in the best way manner. So then we got, of course, your styros for the springs and isos as they always go overnight. And then here's some of the wood. I'm waiting on a pallet of ghost wood to get here this week, which I'm really looking forward to. Uh, I got some great vine right here, some Opani, and then here's a bunch of the different products. I got, I've got my bug grub, my springtail grub, my media. I sold, I think as of right now, I've sold over 1,400 pounds of media so far this year and around 1,200 pounds of bug grub. It's good stuff, guys. Uh, I got, you know, your Pangea, my, the different LEDs. So this is how I ship the LEDs to you. Wrapped in massive bubble wrap and it works usually pretty well. I really like my LEDs because they, they're affordable, they look nice, and boy, boy do they illuminate well without disrupting your, disrupting your animals. Of course, more of your uh, different ZooMed products go here. Uh, so I have the nano lights, I have the tank heaters, hoods, domes, you know, the works, and live moss. I sell live moss by the six quart bag, and a bag like this is seven dollars with free shipping. Always free shipping on my website with a bunch of different stuff. Here is some nice pillow moss. It's beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Miss Kings over here. Got my bio shot. So some people are familiar with the bio shot, some people aren't. The bio shot is what replaced my Springtails and ice spots in my bioactive kit. And it doesn't look like much. I know it doesn't, but it, it, it does have somewhat of a manurely type of smell. What it is, it, is, it has a 444 NPK ratio. Also boasts my Corazol fungi and Archaea bacteria, which essentially drive the natural ecological processes within the soil itself to break down organic matter. Shed, feces, decaying, uh, decaying plant roots, as well as your biodegradables. So, I have all the different quart sizes in here. Your screens, Miss King parts, which I've mentioned. Then we come over here to, this is all the different substrates. You know, all the boxes are labeled pretty straightforward. And here's all my biodegradables. Things like the sphagnum moss, the, the half a pound of cork bar flats. These are great for culturing your bugs or for orchids, things like that. And I got big bags of my substrate over here, all four types, good stuff. And then of course the cork den. So like I said, I'm waiting on a pile of ghost wood. So this is just, sometimes we just, me and my people just put stuff together. And we, we thought to ourselves, how awesome would this be in some big, big terrarium, like a biopod grand one day. I think I'm gonna make something like that happen. And of course I have cork bark tubes. I mean, you can see some of the larger pieces that I have. I always have pieces like this, and these are great for like your lychees, your larger, your toke geckos, things like that. Um, and then I have your other tubes, your thinner, smaller tubes like this that don't weigh really anything, which goes great for the one pound tube bundles. And then of course the flats, and a jiggle bale, flats, I think this bale weighs so, maybe like 300 pounds. Bugs are over here. Um, this winter I'm gonna have a, most likely a heat tape system, keep them warm in this warehouse, so I'll have to figure that out yet. Springtails, different isopods, I culture the Resia over here. 
you guys can take a look. I make all the bugs out right here. So I have one of my LEDs, and then you can see underneath the light kind of what I got going on in here. This is a really neat moss. It does extremely well. And then we go over to the addition. I knocked, or I didn't, but great contractors knocked down the wall, connected to my warehouses, and I created the dude's greenhouse. Yeah. So I got some bromeliads up meow, and some, some more hanging over here. And then this is some of the random bins. So some of the rare plants that I have, so like the, uh, the uh, philodendron wendabies, these are extremely popular. Um, the Labradoria socialis, there's another one that's really popular. I kind of keep the, you know, the ones that sell a ton closer as well as ones I don't have a bunch of closer. And then we come down here. So if we look up top, I got some cool stuff. I have trees for your chameleons. Ficus trees. These are great and they grow extremely easily in the terra firma. I have your cactuses for your bearded dragons and your mastics and other desert animals. I got your large sephleras, which are also great for your chameleons, corn snakes, more durable or heavy duty reptiles, I should say, and amphibians. Got some begonias. So it was great because I was able to buy plants by the truckload. So uh, I am working on getting all of my plant pricing down a little bit and to offer more of an even really nice variety. So here is another begonia. Yeah. So the creeping fig in here, as you can see how it's growing. I do cultivate some of my own stuff. So not, not in excess, however, like different margravias. Um, we got some unique baby tears variety as well. Here's another Margravia bin. I just have some of my substrate with some spag on top. And then here's like the baby tears. I have that directly growing on cork because I, I want to see if you guys would be interested in me selling like cork plant established cork pieces like people do for orchids except for stuff like this. I think it'd be pretty cool. So, then of course I got your different ferns and phytonias. I have the Hammer and Helda gems. These do great as well. They're big too. Got a bunch of different ferns. And we come back here. This is where I keep a lot of like the different succulents. Here are some of the aloes that I sell. So here's, there's a Vera. Grows really nicely, does great for beardies enclosures. Here is the large elephant feed. Have that by the large bins. And of course, here's all your small cactuses, aloes, things like that. So, let me pull this out. Got a bunch of different stuff in here. They're not sharp, I promise. These are mimic cacti. So they actually mimic what a cactus looks like, but they don't actually have like the spikes that are sharp like that. Here you know your different aloes, things like that. Your spaghetti agaves. So I have 6,000 Kelvin bulbs. Eventually I'll go upgrade to LEDs. It's just a very, very expensive endeavor to get to the LEDs, but I'll get there. So then we go out here. So we're gonna come out through here first. So this is just, you know, bathroom, hilarious. So I'm still working on here, so don't judge me that much. So I'm waiting on my blinds to come in. So I have, this tank is empty, there's actually nothing in it. And then this tank is one of my reef ready tanks and it has my tomato frogs in it. And I have a group of six, of these guys, and they're adults. And I probably will breed them next year, but we'll see. But you guys are gonna appreciate this. He's just soaking in our water bowl. What's cool about these is if you rub their sides, they hear that? I'm getting mad. So he's gonna secrete like a white sticky goo that is quite toxic. And I'm just gonna put him back in there. Let him be. Let him be, because 
Lord knows he did not like she did not like that. And then in here, I have my Rococo toad, which is actually about this big, kept on my firma. And she has a deep network of tunnels throughout this entire thing. I have my fire skinks in here with some surrounding heat emitters. Um, and then I have my leopard geckos terrarium in here. And my leopard gecko is thriving. Let's see if I can get them out. The, for, those, for those that ask, the humidity is a constant 20% um, and under in here. With exception of his humid section back here, that is 50, 55%. He has perfect sheds every time. And he does not want to come out. And I wish I could show you guys, because he is a beast. And he looks great. And he loves his terrarium. He's out every night. And then up here is the Pac-Man frog's enclosure. The Pac-Man frog really likes to get underneath that lemon button fern and it continually uproots it, which is slowly killing it, no matter what I do, and that's okay. You know, that's just, that's what Pac-Mans do. And of course, I got more of the, the artwork. I got a uh, little taste of home, the spotted turtles. And then we got a uh, emerald tree monitor. So we'll go out the front door. Awesome. Then we get to the entrance. Palm bar. So we made skid dams, which is great because it works great. So I get, I rented a U-Haul trailer and I filled it up with as much palm bark as I could. And it has been helping my bugs uh, produce significantly more, much faster, which is great. And then over here, we have oak. So here's a bin of live oak. For those of you that are wondering where I get my leaves, I get them from the woods. So there's always sticks and stuff like that in there. When we bag it, we make sure there's no pine needles in there and we make sure there's no trash and we make sure that it doesn't have any spiders or things like that. But again, it comes from the woods and we do sort this out. So, uh, and then this side over here is the magnolia den which I am still trying to get more as it has not been falling. So we have, you know, cabinets that hold, you know, the branding. I'm very happy to have all of my large stickers done. Like for the big bags of substrate, they look absolutely fantastic. Um, and I really am so lucky to be where I'm at right now. It's a great feeling have hard work finally pay off. So you can see some of the extra moss that I have here, some of the ingredients to make some of the fruit fly media. I can tell you the potato flakes and those bags down there only make up about 10% of the mix. So our extra substrate over here, which we wheel out right into the other section of the warehouse and swap it out. Uh, we have some big bags of firma here. Here is W. Uh, that's his nickname is William Chapman. He is one of my great uh, full timers that is uh, one of my product fulfillment specialists with Brandon Gizek. This is where we seal and make all of the product as far as getting it ready uh, and having it all ready for you. So, when you come back over here, and we're going to venture on back through. And we have the plant center, which I don't remember if I showed you guys. I walked right past it. So plants are always shipped in their own, uh, in their own box within the box to make sure they get their healthy. Wrapped in paper towels, uh, then wrapped in butcher paper. I will be using a heat pack during the winter, 72 hour heat pack, which is great. And then that pretty much takes us back to the other side, right here by the biopod. So guys, thank you so much for, uh, for continuing to support my dream of continuing to support the Bio Dude. It means a lot, and I'm really looking forward to serving you guys for a long time. The Dude abides.